All right, uh, so what we're going to do today is let's take a look at uh, strings again and let's do a, a little bit of review also. So if I, for example, uh, had a string, let's say s equals Batman, and we have the len of this string equaling, well, let's count how many letters there are. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means the len of it is not equal to 5. Please don't be confused. That's not the... Um, There we go. That's not the that's not the highest index. That's that that is the highest index, but the len of it is six. So in order to get the max index, we'd have to go len s minus one, okay, which is equal to which which will give us. Oops, nope, that's not right again. <laughs> that's not right again. That's not going to give us 6. Uh, that's going to give us a 5. Okay? Um, but what right now, based on what we've done before, uh, can you, let's, let's take a little test. Can you get the substring, okay, using slices to get the word man out of Batman. So what is the slice that would produce that? I'll go ahead and stop the video and uh, you figure out what it is. Pause the video. Okay, so the solution for this is let's look at the indices that we need here okay so we we want three four five the easiest way to do this okay so if I go into IPython 3 here and I um, type in s equals Batman and now if I go s I want to start at 3 and I want to go all the way to the end so I can leave off my last um, second argument for where to stop and that gives me man okay next test can can you get the um, string can you get the string bat out of Batman okay I'll pause the video and, or you pause the video and give it a shot. Bat from Batman. Okay, so here's how I would do this. We're going to start at zero and go to two. So we could go, we could do something like this. We could go zero, but what I want you to get into the habit of doing is, listen, if it starts from the beginning, then you don't need to put the beginning argument. And now we don't want two, we want three because it ha we have to go one more. Whoops. And so this would give us bat. All right. Um, now comes one that's going to be slightly more difficult. I want you to try and get the um, the string uh, not man but nam so I want this part here the bat backwards so I want nam to come out so the last three letters but backwards okay pause the video and give it a shot 
Okay, so this one is a little bit more tricky because you're going backwards. So for this one, we want to start at the 5. But see, here's the cool thing is we could do this. We could say start at 5 and go till, for example, okay, if we, if we put 3, that's not going to work because we need to go one further than where we want to stop. So therefore, we could, for example, put um, a 2. And then we say, ah, but we want to go backwards. So uh, our stride or our step. And that would give us nam. However, I would suggest that this is not as elegant as what if we left off that and so you see now, this is going to give us nam as well. In other words, leaving off that first argument because it, the 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 step is backwards, the step is the stride is negative one. Instead of meaning from the beginning, it means from the end. Alternatively, there is a third way to do this, and that is to say, remember what negative indices are. Negative indices are. The last one would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. The difference, right, between uh, positive indices and negative indices is that they, at the very end, the last character is always negative 1. Not, okay, so unlike on the top, starting from, it starts from 0. So, therefore, what would this look like? Well, we could also say negative 1, which is the last character, go to 2 going backwards, and that'll also give us nam. So you see, there's, there's actually three different ways you could solve this problem, okay? Now, your next uh, mini assignment is try to get the word tab. In other words, the first three letters backwards. I'll, you pause the video and uh, give it a shot. Okay, we're back. So in order to do this one, notice we're going to get TAB, we're going to have to start at 2. And the question now is, where are we going to stop? So if I write it out, I would say, all right, we're going to start at 2. We know we're going, I'm just going to leave a space there for now. We know we're going backwards, so that's got to be a negative one. But what goes in the middle? Now, obviously, I can't put 0, because if I put 0, that's not going to work. It's only going to give me TA. I need the B. So this is something interesting where in this particular instance, you are, well, you remember before when we did um, NAM, we actually had three different ways we could do NAM because that's the end of the word. But the, the beginning of the word going backwards, it becomes a little more tricky because how do we get the first letter, the B? Because if I, if I put a negative one here, meaning one past zero, that's not going to work. And the reason why that's not going to work is because negative 1 actually means the last character. So the way to do this is simply to leave off, omit the second argument, and say start from 2. And if you omit the second argument, it means you go to the beginning. Why the beginning? Because your step is a negative one step, or sometimes people call it stride. So if I do that now, boom, you see, it, I'm going to get TAB. And so that works. Okay, so it's really important that you know how to do this. So now that we have done this, uh, I let's, let's kind of, um, let's move this out of the way. And let's start again, but this time, I'll, well, it's kind of maybe good to see some of it, right? But what I want to do is 
the same thing we did for Batman, but this time, uh, I want you to do it for a string the user inputs. So for example, I would say s equals input, and now we would say enter a word. Okay, maybe we go like that, looks better. Okay, so now we'll go, oh, I don't know. How about, um, uh, the, the, what I'm, what's going through my mind right now is that Batman is an even numbered word. So can we get this to work for even numbered words and odd numbered words? For now, let's just work with an even numbered word because uh, we'll, we'll figure out for odds a bit later. But how about if I say something like uh, school? Okay, so again, that's, that's the same number. So maybe this is the, uh, uh, the best word. Um, so how about we just go like this then? A, B, C, D, E, F. So that's six, G, H. Okay, so that's, that's eight now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight characters. The question now is, can you do the, the same stuff we did before? In other words, get the second half of the word, get the first half of the word, get the second half backwards, the first half backwards. Now, here's the key that I wanna stress in this situation. I don't want you to hard code the numbers. In other words, okay, so when we did these examples here, right, when we did these examples, we hard coded all the numbers. Now, why did we hard code them? Well, because we just looked at this, we just looked at these numbers here, and we said, all right, we know what, what they have to be. But, what if you don't know the length of the word? All I'm gonna give you right now is, I'm gonna say that it's going to be an even lettered word. So the question now is, okay, so what are our, our four criteria that we have to do? So number one is uh, second half, okay? That was like the example of, for Batman, that was man, okay? Like, like that. So if it's Batman, if Batman, Second assignment is, oops, first half, bat. Third assignment is uh, second but reversed. Okay, so NAM. And lastly, the, the first half, but reversed tab but here's what I want to say is that we're not you don't know how many characters the string is going to be all you know is that it's going to be an even number so it so the len and here's the hint the len of the word could be or in this case word is s so it doesn't matter if it's w or s it could be any even numbered uh, word. So as an example, I said A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, which has a len of eight. Now, once again, I stress don't use the, the number eight. I need you to to use len 
and calculate everything else from that. Okay? So pause the video now. Try the, try the four uh, mini assignments. And it doesn't matter how long the word is, as long as it's even numbered, all four should work. Okay? Pause the video and try it. Okay, so let's give this uh, problem a shot. The easiest way to kind of perceive this is let's move uh, these things, let's move it down and let's take a look at uh, the example we did with Batman. So with, with okay, so let's kind of move this over a little bit too. So what we did is we, to get the, the second half, if you look up here, we did three to the end. Well, instead now of putting in a three, which is hard coding a number, we don't want to do that. Instead, let's go, well, for example, in this case, what's S? A, B, C, so there's eight, right? So if I go len, uh, S, we're going to get 8. Now, obviously, in this case, we want to go 4, but we don't want to hard code 4. So we could say, for example, uh, len S divided by 2. The problem with this now is because we can't really use, because len S divided by 2 is going to give us a float. That's a problem because it's 4.0. Notice, notice the difference. Look at the one above, 8, doesn't have a decimal place. So <clears throat> instead, if we try, now I know we could end up uh, doing something like this, and, and that might work, yeah. Uh, but the other thing which we could do is we could go like this, which is called floor division. Okay, so let's try let's try that for now. So it, it is off. It is a bit less typing too. So therefore, we would go s for the second half. We go len. Oops, len s floor division two, and now we would say to the end. And that would give us the second half of the word. Um, so uh, let's see here. Uh, to, it would look better if we had S being uh, two words. Like how about... Uh, Um, so first word stop what's another stop could be a four letter word S-T-O-P what's another uh, stop okay how about this how about stop love I, I don't know why I just thought of that but love is a four letter word or how about this I got a better one than stop how about love and hate yeah that's a cool one that's actually a reference to a movie by the way I'm not sure if you guys know which movie it is so if I said S equals love, hate, oops, oh, I forgot the, okay. So this kind of is a bit better because now if I do this, I'm gonna get the second half of the word and you know instantly that I got the second half of the word, okay. And now uh, I wanna get the first half of the word, well, that's pretty easy, right? Because now all I'm going to do is I'm going to say S. Now I want to start from the beginning. Great. Okay, that's done. Now where do I want to go till? Len S. And if I go mod 2, or if I go floor division 2 here, this isn't going to quite work, is it? Oh, no, it did work. Yes, of course it's going to work. Because, absolutely, because now if you think about it, here, let's move this up a little bit. 
for a minute I thought it wasn't going to work and then I realized no it, it is right um, if we move this up here and I go love hate zero one two three four five six seven right so now that's four well boom there's the four so we want zero one two three which is exactly what that's going to give us because remember len s floor division two is four right len s floor division two is going to give us four and that means we're going to get zero one two three which is what we want perfect okay so we figured it out at least we figured out the first two without uh, having to hard code anything now comes the more difficult ones now comes getting the word the second half reversed so that means we're going to want to get E-T-A-H. So in order to do this one, uh, how did we do it before? Do you remember? That was NAM. We did it a whole bunch of different ways. But the way that I would suggest uh, works best here would be perhaps this one. It's the least amount of work because I don't have to worry about the first argument. Okay. So I'll say, I'll start from the end. Now remember, usually it means start from the beginning. So uh, usually if you leave off the first one, right, it means start from the beginning. But if you put a negative one in here, now it means start from the end. But the question now is, where do you go until? And the answer is, till the middle. But it's one less than the middle. So if I go like this, right, is this going to work? Not quite. It's missing the H. So I want to go, if you look here, I want to go uh, E-T-A-H. So I'm missing that. So therefore, I want to actually try this again, but now I want to go minus one. And then I get it. Yay. Perfect. So that is no hard coding. For any length string S that's even, that'll work. That'll give you the second half backwards. Now for the first half backwards, okay. Now we're going to go, this one's not that, this one's kind of a little bit easier. This is probably the easier one. We're going to say from the middle, which was len s mod 2. That's the, f okay, but now look, right? Once again, uh, if I do that, where are we gonna start from? We're gonna, for love, hate, we're gonna start from the four, right? So that's not gonna work, but let's just try it to see. But honestly, I know this isn't gonna work, but let's just try it. Uh, now go to the, go to the beginning and negative one and you can see I don't want the H I want eval which is the backwards of love so I have to do the same thing that I did before and subtract the one again and now I get eval which is love backwards so in essence now we have been able to uh, get substrings forward and backwards of any part of the word that we wish using slices and they're more they're generic slices because they'll work for any word now here's the question that we need to contemplate and that is what if the word is not even will it still work and the question now is how do you decide what half the word is if the word isn't even so for example if I said um, S equals uh, hello. So that's one, two, three, four, five words. And so now if I did, let's say for example, this one, I get EH. So it's kind of hard to determine if I do this one. Yeah, oops, let's go back a, a bit more. 
H E. So it's it's still kind of working, but it's hard to decide what half the word is. Because if it's a if it's an oddly numbered word like hello is one two three four five, how can you cut it perfectly in half? So nonetheless. Um, my initial problem was for even words and we got it to work really well. So the next topic today that I'd like to go over with you is something called uh, ORD and CHR in Python. These are built-in functions and in order to understand uh, this we're gonna have to learn so we're gonna have to learn ASCII today. So here is if we if we open up another terminal. Here is uh, yeah. Let's actually switch to this and let's uh, let's change this uh, to um, not keep above the others, and let's go man ASCII. A S C I I. Okay? It stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And in in by default, uh, anyways, Python used to only support ASCII characters as strings, but now it supports Unicode. So it supports all languages and all characters, even characters that look, you know, funny. Um, I know there's, like, for example, in uh, French, there's. Uh, well, actually, ASCII does support. I think I'm not. I can't remember what number they are, but there's certain characters uh, in lots of different languages. Um, there's a whole bunch of different characters in, in languages that, you know, uh, stuff like that and. You know, weird characters, um, even, you know. Anyways, that Unicode handles all that stuff, but we're not going to deal with that right now. We're just going to take a look at ASCII in order to use CHR and ORD. Okay, so CHR stands for uh, character, and ORD stands for ordinal. And so what does this mean? Well, if we look over here, all the, all the characters which you can type, for example, um, all these, you know, exclamation, quote, all these hashtag and all these things, they have, a, and all the numbers here, the numbers actually have their own numbers, so don't get confused by them. And what are these numbers? Well, if we scroll up, what we want to look the column which we're interested in okay is the one that says decimal okay so there's a there's a column that says decimal so if you look over here um, like for example decimal number one is 49 okay and uh, decimal lowercase a is 97 uh, decimal of where is capital A there it is capital A is 65 so now that we know that if we go back to our uh, interpreter here and if I say what is the ordinal number of capital A I'm gonna get 65 what is the character of the number 65 and the answer is character A and it, and if, if I said what's the character of 97 it's it's a what's the character of 48 Oh, it's the number, it's the, it's zero. But notice, it's not an integer, it's a string, okay? That's important. So f I think 49, right, was one. But it's the string one. 
And notice all the other ones are strings too. So essentially, character, oops, let me go back here. Um, CHR accepts a, an integer and returns a string. Whereas ordinal accepts a string and returns an integer. And that integer is the ASCII decimal value. This is the ASCII decimal value, is what it returns. Okay? So, also, the other thing which I want you to know is those ASCII values are ordered. So, in other words, if A is 65, then B is 66, C is 67, and so on. And that also holds true for the lowercase letters, right? So if A, if lowercase A is 97, lowercase B is 98. And it also true, holds true for numbers too, right? So if 0 is 48, 1 is 49, 2 is 50. So now that we know this, um, we can hit, you can hit Q to get out of the ma a man page, okay? Now that we know this, uh, a very cool kind of a exercise that I'm going to ask you to do is, can you print out the entire alphabet? Let's say the, uh, the, the, the capital alphabet. So can you, can you print out A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way to Z. So this is your this is your next assignment, and my the the hint that I'm going to give you is I want you to use CHR and ORD, and I want you to write a loop. But you but here's the cool thing: you don't actually have to go and look at the ASCII table to know what the values are. You can use ORD and CHR to your advantage in creating the loop. So pause the video now and try to create the alphabet simply using, or just printing the alphabet, simply creating a loop using ORD and CHR. Pause the video now. Go. OK, so let's give this a shot now. Um, so the way to do this is Let's start a first uh, a loop for x in range. And now let's go, OK, where are we going to start from? Well, do I need to go and look at the ASCII table to find out what capital A is? No, I don't. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, remember, range can only take integers, right? So I'm going to go ORD, the ordinal value, right? Give me an integer for capital A. Now, by the way, I know, I've, because I've memorized it, I know that's going to be 65. But I don't want you to type in 65, because this looks clearer. For someone who hasn't memorized that, 65 is going to look like some kind of a magic number. But if you say ORD A, oh yeah, OK, turn the letter A into the ASCII decimal value. Now, comma, go to the ordinal value of capital Z. But there's a problem with this because it's not going to reach Z. Because whatever Z is, uh, you need to go one past it to get to that with range. So I'd have to go plus one. Now I'll close the range off. And if I, if I just print these values. This isn't going to work. This is simply going to just give me 65 to 90. That's not what I want. Instead, what I want to do is I want to print out, I want to change those integer values into the corresponding uh, character. And so now when I print it out, yay, I get them all. But the problem with this is that they're all printed out on a separate line. So therefore, I could say, comma, make the ending of each print empty, uh, empty string, 
And so now when I do it, I get all the letters from A to Z in one shot. However, oftentimes when you are doing this in a program, your objective is not to simply print the characters, but rather to create a variable, a string variable that contains all the characters. So I want you to rewrite this loop slightly. There isn't much of a change to make, just a slight change. And I'll, I'll even give you like a, a, a heads up. I'll say alpha equals empty string. Now what I want you to do is run that loop again, but this time instead of printing out the alphabet, assign the alphabet to the variable alpha. Pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, we're back. So the solution to do this is simply to write the loop again, but this time instead of printing it, we're going to use string concatenation. We're gonna say alpha equals alpha plus chrx. And when we do that, now the value of alpha is the string A to Z. Okay? Hope you enjoyed the video today. See you next time.